This video will demonstrate how to write a VBA macro which will dynamically select a data range based on changing rows of data. This is a major drawback of macro recorded macros because they can't facilitate adjusting row ranges in a data set. Let's begin the creation of the VBA macro which will enable dynamic row selection. Using the keyboard shortcut Alt F11 or right clicking on the mouse and choosing view code, we can open up VBA editor. Select insert module because this is the better place to store macros instead of inside the workbook or worksheet events. It's good to get into the habit of giving your macro a short header with the title and description of the macro, which will explain to users the purpose of the macro. A VBA procedure unit or block, which is the technical term for a macro, comprises of a procedure statement, sub or function, and an ending statement with statements or code. In this case, it will be a sub-procedure. If you place private before the procedure type, this will render the macro private to users in Excel. They will be unable to run the macro if they select on new macros in the spreadsheet. Make sure to give the macro a concise yet explanatory name to users. This macro is called Dynamic Row Range. Firstly, to optimise the speed and efficiency of the macro, it is preferable to disable the following Excel object application. Turning the calculation application of manual will prevent the formulas in the underlying spreadsheet from recalculating whilst the macro runs. Disabling the enable events object will prevent Excel from calling event procedures such as workbook or worksheet events during the execution of the code. Disabling the screen updating feature will prevent Excel from following the tasks assigned to the macro. Visual Basic Compiler uses the DIM statement, short for dimension, to ascertain the variables, data type and other information, such as what code can read the variable. Though it is not mandatory to declare all variables, many undeclared variables are stored as a variant, which causes Excel to use more memory. Further, by referencing elements of an Excel spreadsheet, i.e. range B4 instead of via a declared variable, it will result in the macro constantly interacting back and forth with Excel. By applying set in a macro, it will greatly reduce the amount of code, not to mention improve the speed of the macro. Here we will set the WS variable sheet 1 and the start cell variable to range B4. Finding the last row of the data set in a dynamic fashion will dictate the macro's overall value. Using the last row variable, along with the WS variable, will enable a macro to count the number of rows, courtesy of the end Excel up syntax. N means the macro locates the last cell in that range and Excel up goes up the column until it finds something that is not blank. The 
macro is now ready to dynamically select the last row of data based on the start cell variable. Followed by the last row variable. and column G, which we assume is always the last column. The macro is now complete, and so we can re-enable the earlier Excel features which we earlier had disabled during the execution of the macro. Let's save and close out of VBA Editor and run the macro to ensure that it is referencing dynamically changing rows of data. We will insert a form control button and assign the macro to this button. Great, the macro is selecting the data array. Let's add some new rows of trade data as in the following and check the macro is still working. Finally, we'll clear data from the range and witness the macro's full value.